Folks, welcome to The Contrarian Trader. I, I, I know there are many people who, who got excited by this market over the past couple of days. The media went from bearish last week to bullish this week. The same old story. And you probably bought stocks and you stuck with them now. And the market reversed. And you want to know what the frig happened. Well, let me tell you what happened. And this is what I sent out to my members over the week weekend in video. And I sent out alerts last week. And I even posted on Twitter on the 30th through the 4th of exactly what was going to happen. Last week you had the meltdown in the overall stock markets. And this is how it works. You have the central banks that get together. You have Bernanke calling over his counterpart in Europe and China, and they get together. And they say, listen, how do we stop this selling? The euro is crashing. The dollar is soaring. The U.S. stock market's going down, and it's election year. We can't have this. This is... This is what Bernanke is saying to the other central planners. How do we stop this? So what they do is this. They come out with a plan. And the following week, because it's light economic data this week, and Bernanke is going to be speaking in front of Congress on Wednesday. Wow, that's convenient. All right, so we have something there. This is what they're saying to each other. All right, so Ben, you're going to be in front of Congress on Wednesday. So we need to get something out on Monday. So what came out on Monday? Ah, the G7 had a conference call. When the heck did they have a conference call? To do what? Has anybody heard any news come out of that G7 conference call? No, nothing. In fact, the only news, because I've been watching, what's, what's new? What, what new came out of that G7 conference call? This is what I read this morning, 5 a.m. this morning. Merkel backs two-speed Europe with core euro in poke at Cameron. She's poking Cameron, the British Prime Minister. Rome is on fire, and she is playing with gasoline. She's poking, she's poking Prime Minister Cameron, Cameron. There's nothing resolved. So, this morning, the futures wait. They're a little bit wobbly, but Ben's going to be coming out later on in the morning. So, what do the Chinese do right before the U.S. markets open up? Ah, all of a sudden, you have an interest rate cut over in China. And that's supposed to spike the market. And it spiked the futures. And I always tell my members, don't watch the futures. Don't watch the futures because they're rigged. Watch the currency markets. Watch the bond markets. That's the way you trade these markets. Sure enough, the Chinese news comes out. And I'm, I, I, I typed out an email to members this morning before the market. But I said, this is ridiculous what's going on here. This is ridiculous. The markets are rallying. Because the Chinese are cutting interest rates? Forgive me, but isn't it young Timmy Geithner who goes over and tells China, well, maybe you can increase the value of your yuan so that we can export goods to you and that you can buy them and that your goods aren't so cheap that you're not flooding our markets with cheap imports? That's supposed to be good for our markets? What happens when they, re when they cut interest rates? The value of their yuan declines and the U.S. dollar rallies. So they can't buy our goods, but they flood our markets with new goods. That's supposed to get me excited and want to buy stocks? I don't think so. Yet, they took the markets higher. They opened. All right, so let's take a look at the open, the one-minute chart of the IWM, Russell's 2000, and how we opened up this morning on the heels of, wow, <laughs> China lowered their interest rates. That's supposed to excite me. Okay, folks, go buy your stock. It's, it's nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. So... They spike it open, and I look at this thing. You know, they open it up with an RSI. Where were we with the RSI? Oh, I, know, I think it was above ninety. Yeah, ninety-one, ninety-eight, almost ninety-two on the RSI. And I didn't plan on adding to shorts until we got a key reversal. But I saw this. I saw the news, and I said, "Man." I cannot resist this short. So we opened up a short position on the IWM. And sure enough, the rest is history. Ben came out. He didn't deliver what the markets wanted. And here's your selling. It was a great day for us. And I feel bad for a lot of people that are out there long. But this was predictable. And people wonder why. Why should I join your service? And here's the reason why. You have a lot of guys out there that, that profess to be market mavens. And they'll, they'll never come out with, with 
proof that they made their, their, their calls. You know, here's my proof. I made the calls. Now, I, I rarely tweet. So if you think you're just going to follow me on Twitter and get all the, the, all my uh, alerts and such, it's not going to happen. I don't, I don't post all that much on Twitter, but sometimes I like to document what I think is going to happen in the markets. And on the 30th, this is when the markets are tanking. U.S. dollar with an RSI above 80. Expect a key reversal soon and a brief rally in the stock markets, even though the futures are bright red. So I, we knew it. We saw the futures are bright red. Going to be a down opening. We knew they're going to rally the market back. Sure enough, they did. You had a huge, you had, you had the, the biggest up day in the stock market for the for the year thus far. Uh, that was on Tuesday. On the fourth, I predicted that they were going to rally the euro versus the U.S. dollar. It was going to rally to 126, setting the stage for a stock market rally for a couple of days. Then comes the rollover to new lows. Well, let's take a look at the Forex. Where do we top out today? Here's the fourth back here when I sent out the alert on Twitter. We rallied, pulled back, rallied right up to 126. We broke below. This is a 30-minute chart of the euro versus the U.S. dollar. We broke below the lower band of the rising uptrend line. That was indicator number one. We're going to begin to break down. Then you want to watch after you break down and you're going to get that rally, whether or not you can break out to new highs. We didn't break out to new highs. We were unable to even meet the previous high. We put in a new lower high. That's when we knew the coast was clear and we were going to get a key reversal on the market. 3.30, I sent out an alert to members. This is going to happen, and we got it. Let's break out to the uh, – please, while well, I'm still on this Twitter feed, sign up for my Twitter account, please. Just follow me on Twitter, and uh, you'll get my alerts when I do send them out. So let's get out, let's pull back. You know, this, let's, let's go over what I was telling my members, what was going to happen. Last night I sent out, and this is Tuesday evening, I sent out commentary to my members, watch out for the IWM, because I opened up short positions on Tuesday and added – on Wednesday, watch out for the IWM because as goes the IWM, so goes the markets. You had a 2.5% rally on Tuesday, yet take a look at the volume. The volume came in only slightly higher than Monday. What does that tell you? Between the volume and this gap higher, it told you that this was pure short covering, pure, and it could only last so long. Add to that fact that you have the 50-day moving average, that is rapidly, rapidly closing in on the 150-day moving average, that's going to set this market up for a technical breakdown. And you need to be short of this market. This is not a market to be long of, and I, I caution you against it. And if you don't want to short, you're not used to shorting, just go to cash. But you got to lighten up on these long positions. If you're a long-term investor, dollar cost averaging, that's a different story. Maybe you want to pull some out. Put it on cash to the sidelines. But if you're a trader, brother, if you don't want to short, get the cash because what you saw today was as bearish a reversal as you're going to get on the IWM. And it's only going to get worse. So please sign up for the 14 day free trial offer. And you'll, you'll get my alerts, you'll get my commentary, and you get my videos on Sunday, which are about 35 minutes long, about what's going to happen in the coming week. What's our strategy? And we planned this. We knew since the 30th that this is the outcome that was going to occur. It's documented. There's no BS here. It's documented on Twitter. S&P 500. Look at this. Key reversal here. This is ugly. This is ugly stuff. Take a look at the volume. Volume came in higher than the previous day. Take a look at the IWM. Volume came in higher on Wednesday than it did on Tuesday's up day. You don't get much more bearish than that, folks. So please be cautious. Sign up for the 14-day free trial offer. And if nothing else, uh, sign up for the, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, subscribe to my channel. Or if you're watching this on the homepage, please uh, enter your email and you get the, uh, some of my, I send out some blogs every once in a while. I'm not a big blogger, but I send it out every once in a while. So to ban them, you'll get that. And um, if you have any questions, please. I just want everybody to, be careful with this market. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. I'd be more than happy to answer it if you can, if I can. And please sign up to, uh, for, to follow me on Twitter as well. Everybody, please be careful. 
Don't believe these thugs in the media. Don't believe these thugs in Washington. And don't believe these thugs on Wall Street. It's absolutely corrupt. If you think it's corrupt, it is corrupt. That's why you should sign up for the 14-day free trial offer. Look forward to speaking to you. Everybody have a great, great Friday. Have a great, great weekend. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.